affected of the world, but not so much of the church, right. have a warped view of the devil. Right. Amen? True. They picture him as somebody said, might have been Brother Sleece, sitting on some kind of torture throne in hell, poking a, fit, a pitchfork at everybody that gets tossed there. Yeah. He is not the master of hell. Come Amen? On. True. He ain't even been there yet. All right. Amen? True. He's going to go to the lake of fire and he's going to be tormented. Right. Amen? Yeah. Forever and ever. Amen. Right now, he's going about seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Amen? Come on. But he is not going to be some kind of torture master in hell. Come on. He's going to go to hell or to the flames the same reason other people will. All right. For rejecting God's way. Mm -hmm. Amen? And choosing his own. Really, when you get down to where the rubber meets the road, that's the what that's what takes you to hell. Right. Rejecting God's way Amen. and choosing your own. That's why the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Amen. But the end yes. thereof is death and destruction. Amen? True. There is a way that seems right. Exactly. Seems more logical. Exactly. But it's the wrong way. Yes. Amen? Wrong if you have your Bible with you this morning, turn to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. And we're going to read a few verses there. Brother Dave was talking about Brother Billy Frizzell a little while ago. And Brother Billy Frizzell was such a very, very good friend and a, and a, and a good man. Yes. I don't, know, I don't know of anyone that ever spoke an ill word about him, to me anyway. And I loved him and I appreciate him. The only regret that I have is that I... I Got out of touch with him for so long. Amen. Me too. And uh, whenever they, whenever you lose a, someone like that, then you regret the fact that you lost touch with them and didn't right. stay in contact with them. True. So many memories have came back to me this week of Amen. the times that we spent together in service and the times yes. that we spent together on the on the fish bank and yes. all the times that me and him took his old boat over there to. Uh, Ohio County and put it in and out of little ponds and Amen. stripper pits and we would come home maybe with one fish but you couldn't tell it by the way that we were acting because we had had such a good time with fellowship and yeah. it was just such a blessing Amen. to be around him a blessing to know the man right. Amen I wouldn't bring him back All right. Amen True. he wouldn't come back come not on. now come on. I'm sure he's like the rest of us he didn't really want to go but now that he's gone, he wouldn't. He don't want to come back. Oh, Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Let's look at what the Apostle Paul had to say about this journey that lies before us today. Each and every one of us, when we're born, start out on a journey. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For that will begin from the time you're born till the time you die, and we have a course that is set before us, a race to run, a journey. This journey that is called life. Let's see what the Apostle Paul tells Timothy here. Paul's getting ready to be offered on Nero's chop block as a martyr for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. This same Jesus whose followers he persecuted, who he killed, amen? Right. He killed the followers of Jesus. Now this man finds himself some years down the road ready to lay down his life for this Jesus Christ, amen, that he blasphemed and that he tortured those that followed him. He's speaking to Timothy here in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Beginning of the first verse, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. The Apostle Paul, the words that he used with Timothy, Timothy said that the time will come. I submit to you this morning that the time is here. Amen. Amen. We, if we have ever lived in a day where we see this Scripture in our headlines, where we see this Scripture in our pulpits and in yes. our churches today. Amen? Yes. Is it, we see it today. They will not endure sound doctrine. They do not want to hear sound doctrine. Amen? They have heaped to themselves teachers 
having itching ears, wanting them to soothe their flesh right. and tell them what they want to hear. That is as good a picture as the modern day church as you're yeah. going to find in all of the Word of God. Amen. Yeah. They have heaped to themselves feel good preachers, yeah. feel good teachers, somebody that will tell me, speak to me soothing words. Come on. Heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. He tells Timothy, endure afflictions. Now we have to remember the mindset of the Apostle Paul when he's speaking to Timothy here. He's giving Timothy some instruction and some insight on his experience and his walk with the Lord. And he's trying to teach Timothy something before he goes away. He wants to give him this charge. He wants to give him this, these instructions. He tells Timothy to endure afflictions because Paul knew that afflictions would be a part of Timothy's journey. Amen. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Brother Dave, I want to assure you this morning right. that Jesus will never leave you. Come on. He will never forsake you. Come on. He will always be with you. Yes. But with that, I can also give you the assurance that you will face things in life. Amen. There will be afflictions in life. True. There will be valley experiences in life. Right. There will be trials in life. Amen. I challenge you today to find anyone, anywhere, that has not went through some kind of trial, some kind of afflictions in their life, Amen. some kind of a test and trial that they have went through. True. And Paul is instructing Timothy as if to say, afflictions are going to come, Timothy. Endure them. Amen. Press through them. Yeah. Hold on. Be faithful. Even when times are rough, even whenever times are lean, hold on to Jesus. Amen. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Then he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Amen. Listen, he's talking to Timothy. These words are for you today as well. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He was telling Timothy, There is a fight that must be fought. In my journey, in my course of life, the path of which I have walked, my spiritual walk with the Lord, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Amen. I have kept the faith. All right. See, being on the course, being in the race, and finishing the race are two different things. Yes. You may find yourself today that at one time you were in the race. At one time you were you were in the journey, you were pressing on for Jesus. True. But before you got to the, what a sad thing that would be today mm. for you to work for the Lord and to press on and to journey on and to press forward in your course for God and oh, find right. yourself before you reach the finish line. You gave up. Come on. You sat down. Yes. Paul said, don't give up, Timothy. There is a race that is set before you. Oh, there is a on. course that you must finish. There is a faith that you must keep. That means to guard. Yeah. That means to hold on to it. Amen? Exactly. Listen to me. The world, the flesh, and the devil will try to strip you of your faith. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And Paul's instructing Timothy, you must keep it. Guard it. Hold on to it. On. Hold fast to those things which I have delivered unto you. All right. Keep the faith. Fight a good fight. Yeah. Finish your course. Amen. He says in verse 8, Henceforth yeah. there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only. Now how do I know these words are not just for Paul? How do I know these words are not just for Timothy? How do I know these words are for us today? The Apostle Paul said, Not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. I can stand up here today and tell you that everything's going to be rosy in your life. Everything's going to be great in your life. 
All you have to do is have positive thoughts. All you have to do is get up each morning and declare positive things and speak positive things into your life. And you'll never go through a trial. You'll never see a rough time. Everything will be great and rosy and good and everything will just come up all marshmallow and pretty for you. But I'd be lying to you if I did that. There are preachers that will tell you that. Amen. Yeah. There are plenty of preachers. There's enough. There's more. There's too many preachers this morning that will stand in the pulpit, smile from ear to ear, and tell you this can be the best life you're ever going to see. Amen. You can, you can speak positive. You can have positive thoughts. You can speak things in existence. God wants nothing but the best for you and that you'll never go through anything at all. Those preachers are full of what I like to call B-O-L-O-G-N-A. Amen. Full of baloney. baloney. You will not find one man in this book from Genesis to Revelation that didn't go through something. You will not find one man of God that's worth his salt as a preacher that hasn't been through the trial, that hasn't seen a midnight hour, that hasn't been on their knees before God saying, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Paul said, Timothy, press on. Keep the faith. Finish your course. Don't fall short of the goal. Fight a good fight. Paul had fought a good fight because the enemy will try and take your faith. He's telling Timothy, keep the faith because the enemy will try and take your faith from you. Amen. Right. Your own carnal mind will try and... I am persuaded today. Don't get me wrong. The devil is our enemy. The Bible's clear on that. Yes. But boy, I tell you, coming in a close second is the man you see in the mirror every morning. Amen? Amen. As far as who's enemy number one. Right. Because your own carnal, your own carnal pea brain compared to God mm -hmm. and His knowledge, yeah. your own carnal pea brain will try to talk you out of your faith. Right. Do you really believe that? Mm -hmm. Is that really true? Mm -hmm. How could that possibly be? That just doesn't make any logical sense. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Your flesh will try and take your faith. Exactly. Yes. The world will for sure try and strip you from your faith. Well, you old, you old unlearned redneck, yeah. you Billy hick. Yeah. You surely don't believe that God created the heaven and the earth and everything we see in, in six days? <laughs> you must be ignorant. Somebody in the room's ignorant, but it ain't the one that believes that. Amen? Come on. Amen? We got a lot of smart people. They're so stupid and even funny. Amen. Got the brain of a fence post. If God said it, that settles it. Whether you can understand it, whether you can figure it out, whether you can wrap your mind around it, it's Come finished. On. It's settled. Come on, preach. Amen. It's settled. you don't have to understand it. True. Yeah, but I can't figure it out. You don't have to figure it out. Right. I don't need to understand. I just need to hold his hand. I don't ever need to ask the reason why for I know He'll make a way through the night and through the day. I don't need to understand. I just need to hold His hand. You don't have to understand everything. And when you try to, you're going to get messed up because in trying to understand it, you're going to have to try to explain it. And in order to try to explain it, you're going to have to use your old carnal way of thinking. Come on. And His thoughts are way up there above our thoughts. Amen. Amen. His ways are way up there above our ways. Amen. Right. If He said in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, guess what? In the beginning yeah. God created the heaven and the earth. If He said He created it in six days, guess what? He created it in six days. Amen. If He said there was Noah and an ark and a flood, there was Noah and an ark and a flood. Amen. Amen. Yeah. True. And I don't want to shut up. You don't have to understand it. That's right. You don't have to understand that. Right. The only thing you really have to understand 
And you can't really understand it, but the only thing you really have to bring into complete focus and to realize without the shadow of a doubt, without any shadow of turning, is that Jesus Christ came and gave His life for you. And that faith in Him is the only way of salvation. The only means of righteousness. Amen? It'd be nice to know all these other mysteries and things, but I can go to heaven without knowing all those mysteries. Amen? As long as I know Jesus. Amen? You can go to heaven without knowing all all of that deep stuff as long as you know Jesus. Amen? The brightest and most and the most elite professors and scientists that we have. Amen? They might be able to dissect an atom. They might be able to tell you X plus Y equals Z. Amen? Or whatever. But if they don't know Jesus, they don't know Jack. Amen? Because the only thing you really gotta know is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Put your faith in His sacrifice and you can make heaven your home. Amen. You can make heaven your home. Exactly. Why in the world, if I don't know that, why do I need to spend my time trying to figure everything else out? That knowledge ain't going to do me no good in hell. Right. A lot of scholars in hell. Mm -hmm. They could read to you the Greek, they can read to you the Hebrew, but they couldn't recognize Jesus for who He was. A lot of Pharisees in hell. Amen. They knew the Torah. Right. They knew the law. Right. They could quote to you from the written scrolls. True. But they didn't know Jesus. All right. What you need to know today is that Jesus Christ Amen. is who He said He was. Yes. He came and He gave His life on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Yes, sir. Don't let Satan rob you of that. Right. I'm trying to get you to wrap your mind around everything and make everything make sense to you because it's not everything is not going to make sense to you. Right. Amen. Come on, preach. Can I tell you something that bothers me today? I hear preachers all the time. And some of them I like a lot. So I'm not doubting them. Some of them I don't care much for. But they're teaching anyway. But they'll be reading the King James. And they'll say, that should have been interpreted this way. That should have been translated this way. And I kind of get tickled at them in a way, because they don't have the knowledge that those translators had. Right. They don't have the material that those scholars had. Amen. There was 54 of those scholars. We're not talking about just a matter of difference of opinion between me and Brother Dave. We're talking about 54 scholars, the best that they had at the time. Amen? Right. You don't have their material. You don't have their knowledge. So who in the world do you think you are saying, you know, they didn't get that right? Come on. Amen? Come on. There is something to be said today about being faithful right. in the journey. True. No matter how bad things get, and this is the exhortation that Paul was giving to Timothy, no matter how bad things get, no matter how hard things are, no matter how many times you fall, be faithful. Press on. Yeah. Finish your course. Wow. Keep the faith. Yeah. Fight a good fight. Amen. Yeah. There's going to be a fight. Yes, fight a good fight. Yes, Paul knew what he was talking about. His life had not been an easy one since he had turned his heart over to Jesus Christ Come and on. put his faith in Him. His life, his journey had not been an easy one. Right. But he knew that he had kept the faith. Now he's ready. He said, I'm ready. I fought the fight that was worth fighting. I've kept the faith that was worth keeping. I finished my course, the race that was worth finishing. I'm ready to go. Amen. One place he told him to live is for Christ. Yeah. But to die is gain. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish we could get that today. Yeah. To live is for Christ. Right. But to die is gain. Amen. I want to go on home. But for your sakes, i got to stay All and right. teach you some more. Oh. Amen. Because even though I'm ready, you ain't. Amen. Amen. That was Paul's way of thinking. Yeah. I'm ready to go, but it's better for you that I stay. Come on. There is a journey. There is a race to be ran today. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And let me assure you, the joy is worth the journey. Yes. The victory is worth the fight. Amen. Amen. True. Paul said, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, right. but unto all them that love His appearing. There's a crown of righteousness. It's got my name on it. 
It says it's reserved for. Amen. God, don't listen. Don't let them. Don't let them have to go over and say, "Well, this one was reserved for Sleece Butler, but he didn't finish his course. He didn't keep the faith. He didn't fight a good fight." He didn't finish that which he started. The Bible, Paul said, I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that. Amen. To keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Don't let the enemy take your crown. Amen. There's a crown reserved for you today. Yes. Press on. Listen, I want to encourage you this morning and let you know it's going to be worth every trial, every heartache, and every mile. It's going to be worth it all one of these days. Amen. If you could ask Brother Billy Frizzell today, he would tell you it's worth it all. Amen. The journey was worth the journey. The journey was worth the, 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 uh, the, the fight. The, the victory was worth the fight. I'll get it out in a minute. The victory was worth the fight. Amen. The enduring, oh, the joy was worth the enduring I had to do. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The crown was worth the race that had to be run. There's a crown laid up for us today. There's a joy to be had. Whenever he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. The, the journey this morning is worth it. Come on. The joy is worth the journey. It's worth it all. It'll be worth it all. Amen. If you could ask those that have went on before us today, was it worth it? Oh, you better believe it was worth it. Amen. Sister Martine, was it worth it? Oh, Glory right. to God, it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Fitchers, is it worth it? Yeah. Oh, you better believe it's worth it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have not seen yeah. and ear hath not heard the things that he has in store for those that love him. Amen. Yeah. I can't explain it to you today because ain't nobody ever seen it. Ear, human carnal ear oh. has not heard it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. We're going to a land where he is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple and every tear will be wiped away and there will be no more sorrow, no more death, no more dying, no more saying goodbye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it worth it? Oh, yes, it's worth it. The joy is worth the journey. Yes. The joy that cannot be explained. Right. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Heaven. Heaven. Yes. Heaven him, will be worth it all. Yes, amen. My Lord, turn with me to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Never regret a mile. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, amen. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Let's read some more about what the Apostle Paul had to say. Amen. Oh, see, there's going to be opposition. Amen. There's going to be times... When the flow just ain't going the way you right. need to be going. True. And you gotta swim against it. Amen. There's gonna be obstacles and things. Amen. True. There's gonna be opposition, and sometimes it's in the form of people. Come on. Not always unsaved people. Yes. I've had more trouble out of saints than I ever have had of sinners. All right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. There's gonna be opposition. Yes, sir. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be times of grief, times of sorrow, times of pain, Amen. times of woe. Yes. Hey, my Lord, preacher, right. you're trying to get me to give up, and no, I'm trying to get you to go on. Right. Because I want us to get a little bit of a glimpse today Amen. of what lies in store for those that endure. Right. Those that endure to the end, yeah. the same shall be saved. Paul said, Wherefore, in Hebrews 12 and 1, Wherefore, seeing we, are, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Listen to him. Talking about that course that he finished. Mm -hmm. Let us run the, with patience the race that is set before us. There is a race that is set before you today. Right. There is a course that is set before you today. Absolutely. There is a journey that you are on today. Exactly. He said, run it with patience. Looking unto Jesus, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Listen, how, listen what he says. 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, right. despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Come on. For consider him, meaning think about him, that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied yeah. and faint in your minds. Come on. He's saying, think about the fact that Jesus endured the cross yeah. that was set before him. Come on. The cross that he had to endure because of the joy that was set before him. Amen. Right. Think about the cross that he went through to get the joy. Amen. Right. Think about the trial whenever you go through it. Think about the fact that this trial, this thing did not come to stay. It came to pass. Think about the fact that even if whatever you're going through kills you, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Think about the fact that heaven will be worth it all. That there's nothing in this world that's worth losing your soul for. Think about the fact that the Bible says what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? The joy Lord, the day is worth the journey. And if you could ask the saints that have went on before us, if you could ask Brother Billy, if you could ask Sister Martha, if you could ask Sister Martine, if you could ask Brother Paul, if you could ask Brother Hinton, if you could ask Peter and James, if you could ask the, oh, hallelujah, the Apostle John out on the Isle of Patmos, was it worth it all? They'd say, glory to God, it was worth it all. It was worth it all. It was worth it all. Just to hold on to my faith, till I finish my course, I'm going to keep my faith until I finish my course. I'm going to fight a good fight. Hallelujah. Amen. And even if I have to crawl, Lord bless it. even if I have to crawl across the finish line, oh. I'm going to finish my course. Yes. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on. You don't have to run across it. You don't even have to walk across it. As long as you crawl across it. Amen. Oh. Holding on to those nail scarred hands. I finished my course. Oh, I've kept my faith. Yes. I'm entering into the, Lord. the joy of the Lord. He is worthy. Heaven will be worth it all. Yes. Amen. We have joy in this life. Yes, sir. But it's nothing to be compared to that which lies ahead. Right. If we'll hold on to Him. Absolutely. If we'll hold on to Him, the joy is worth the journey. Come on. Think about what Jesus went through. Consider the joy that was set before Him. Consider the joy that is set before you today. Right. Press toward right. that. Press toward True. that. Amen. True. The Apostle Paul would also say that he count not himself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I press. I press toward the mark. He's talking about fighting that good fight. He's talking about keeping that faith. He's talking about finishing his course. I press. Because sometimes, listen, more times than not, you're going to have to push. You're going to have to press. Amen? It's a pressing way. Amen. You're going to have to press against the world. That's right. You're going to have to press against your flesh. True. More times than not, you're going to have to press against the church. Because they're trying to hold you back. Come on, say it. Amen. Say it. You're going to have to press through it. Right. To finish your exactly. course. To fight a good fight. You're exactly right. To keep the faith. Right. To walk into that joy Amen. that lays before you. Yeah. If we get our eyes off of the temporal things of this world and realize there's a better day of coming. Right. There's a better place of coming. Come on. There is a heaven to gain and a hell, hell to show. Come. Listen to me. You remember over there where... The rich man talked with Abraham from hell. He was in hell and Abraham in Abraham's bosom. And he, the things that he said, yes. that rich man, if someone asked him, he said, and you know what his words were? Go and warn my family. Right. Tell them don't come to this awful place. Yeah. Amen. Tell them don't come to this awful place. Amen. Well, if you can talk to a loved one that has went on home right. and they're in that joy of the Lord today, Amen. they would say, Tell my family, they don't want to miss this. <laughs> Tell my family, whatever they do, it's worth the journey. The victory is worth the fight. Hallelujah. It's worth the journey today. Heaven will be worth it all. And listen, let's set aside the fact 
that there's going to be streets of gold, that there's going to be gates of pearl, that there's going to be a mansion with my name on it. Let's set aside the fact that it's going to be beauty like never been seen before. Let's set aside the fact about the river of life and the crystal river there. Hallelujah. Let's set aside all of that stuff. If none of that was there, if it wasn't nothing but no dirt gravel road, think about the fact that we're going to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. My, my, my. We're going to get to look in to those eyes of the Nazarene that bled and died for you. Oh, think about the fact that like old Thomas, we're going to get to put our hand into the hole in his side. We're going to get to touch the nail scars in his hand. Oh, God, I'm going to follow it. There's one thing that I've learned. Come on, brother. The older you get, the more death becomes a reality to you. Come on. But you know what I'm beginning to think? The older I get, the more heaven becomes a reality to me. Amen. That's true. Amen. That's right. Nothing gets you to thinking about death more. And when you have to go and see a loved one in a casket. Yes, sir. When you have to go say goodbye to a True. friend or a True. loved one. Amen. True. And I don't think much, there's much of anything else gets you to think about heaven more. All right. Than to know that they're there. Yes. Amen. Yes, amen. And that the joy is worth the journey. Fight a good fight. Keep the amen. faith. Press on. Press on. Yes. Do we have joy in this life? You better believe it. Right. I'm happy. I love the Lord. Amen. I love living for the Lord. Right. Amen. Come on. You might as well waste your time smoking your dope and drinking your drink and, and living it up. I don't even compare to the joy I have in Jesus. All right. True. Amen. True. Somebody, Brother Mike, I got to have me and him spent Friday afternoon down here recording some songs of his. And <laughs> he's, he said somebody told him, you make living for Jesus look like fun. <laughs> oh, it is. Amen. You just didn't get a hold of the right thing. Yeah. When you tried it, you got a hold of religion that left a bad taste in your mouth. Right. Amen. Come on. You get a hold of Jesus, you'll find out what living is. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. So we do have joy in this life, but listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. <laughs> Oh, my, my, my. The joy is worth the journey. And I'm trying to wind oh, this thing God. down. But listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Go ahead, let her rip. As I lay in my bed at 1 o'clock this morning, mm -hmm. I couldn't shut my eyes. I so stirred up in the Holy Ghost. Oh, so stirred up yes. with the Word. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait to get to church to share with you Amen. what He shared with me. Mm -hmm. To let you know the joy is worth the journey. Amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. The victory, Brother Dave, is worth yes. the fight. Amen. amen. That it is going to be worth Let it all, all when we see Him. Amen. Yes. When we step over into the joy that lays before us. When He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Honey, there ain't nothing you ever felt, nothing you ever seen, nothing you ever heard going to compare to what He has in store store for us over there. Amen. Hallelujah. i got to settle down. Be more dignified. 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. Paul says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, <laughs> we are of all men most Amen. miserable. I feel sorry for you today if you don't believe in heaven. Amen. Amen. Because somewhere inside when you think about eternity, or what's going to happen after this life, you must be one miserable dude. Mm. Amen. If you think that this is all there is and there's nothing else, I feel sorry for you. Amen. If we only had hope in this life, right. we would be of all men most miserable. But because He lives, I can face, I can face tomorrow. tomorrow. Because He lives, all oh, fear is gone. Amen. Because I know, yes, I know, He holds the future. And life is worth a living just because He lives. Amen. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as, Adam in all, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ 
shall all be made alive. <laughs> Amen. Oh, that's powerful. Praise my, 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 my. Y'all's pastor's crazy. The joy is worth the journey today. Amen. Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before Him. Right. You don't have to go there, but I want to read it to you. Matthew 25 and 21 says, His Lord said unto Him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Amen. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I kind of tied this in with it. Matthew 24 and 45 says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made him ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Amen. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Now listen to the way that was worded. Maybe it blesses me because I'm just an old sinner saved by grace and I know how weak and frail I am. He said, well done thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over everything. They ain't what he says. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on. I believe that every word in this book belongs there. I believe he wanted us to know that this servant that had been faithful, even wow. though he had fallen, even though he had failures, yeah. he'd been faithful over a few things. Come on. I submit to you today that he had kept the faith. Right. He had finished his course. He had fought a good fight. Right. And that joy that lay before him, he's getting ready to step over into it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, my Lord. Praise the Lord. When he comes, will he find us being faithful in the journey? Pressing on. Sure, I fail. But glory to God, I got back up. All right. Amen. Amen. I've fallen a million times. Amen. Right. right. But I've got back up every time. Amen. And just kept on going. Yes. Kept on going. Kept on going. He ain't going to drag nobody over the finish line. Right. <coughs> if you make it, it'll be because you chose to finish your course. True. You chose to run the race. <coughs> you ain't going to see nobody up there that said, well, I didn't want to come, but he drug me anyway. Mm. Amen. 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 Keep the faith. Finish your course. Fight a good fight. Amen. For the joy that is set before you. Yes. Amen. Amen. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Yes. Finish your course. It's going to be worth it all. Amen. Every heartache, every trial, every long weary mile, the joy is worth the journey. Right. But the choice is yours. Amen. You don't have to go if you don't want to, Brother Rodney. Come on. You can give up. You can get tired of the struggle and tired of the fight and tired of the present, Brother Dave, and you can just... Yeah, I ain't going to mess with it no more. <laughs> ain't worth it. Oh, <laughs> well, if you could get a glimpse of what we're talking about this morning, you'd never say that again. Yes, sir. Because it's worth it. Exactly. It's worth it. Absolutely. But you're going to have to decide. You're going to have to decide whether you're going to fight, whether you're going to press, whether you're going to journey on, or whether you're going to give up. Right. True. Amen. And giving up will be a greater price than you ever wanted to pay. Amen. Amen. True. It's worth it. Absolutely. The joy is worth the journey. Mm -hmm. The joy is worth the journey. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. He said to him in Jeremiah, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. That's what he's done for us today. Amen. He sets before us a choice. Life or death? You decide. You decide which way you're going to go. I'm trying to close. The joy that is set before us far outweighs the trials and the pains of this life. True. Heaven. What, he, Brother Bobby Grove sings a song. Heaven holds all to me. Amen. True. Nothing in this life is worth missing heaven over. No one in this life is worth missing heaven over. Nothing this world has to offer is worth missing heaven over. True. As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that 
love him. True. Amen. Woo! Can I read that again? Yes, sir. Oh, I don't know if I can or not. But as it is written, I have not seen, this is 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love him? Yes. Do you love him? Amen. Oh, I'm trying to tell you this morning the joy is worth the journey. You ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Well, true. Romans, the eighth chapter. I'm closing. Romans, the eighth chapter. In the 16th verse, Paul says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, we may also be glorified together. Listen to what Paul said. Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon... Anybody ever said that before? Yes. If you live in Kentucky, you've probably said that before. True. Well, I reckon. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You know what that means? For I reckon that means I have weighed the two. I have deducted. I have concluded. I have came to the conclusion after weighing it all, seeing what this world has to offer, seeing what heaven, all the heaven there is to gain, and I reckon, I reckon that the sufferings of this present meaning that I have, decided, I have concluded, this is the sum of the matter, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. The victory, the victory is worth the fight. Yes. The joy is worth the journey. Absolutely. Amen. True. I've looked at everything this whole world has to offer, and at one time Paul would say it ain't nothing but done. Right. D-U-N-G. True. Compared to the things of the heavenly. Amen. Oh, man, I wish I could preach this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Maybe y'all take up offering and send me to cemetery. I mean seminary. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Anything you're going through, the joy is worth the journey today. But the choice is yours. He ain't going to drag you into heaven. You're going to have to press or give up. Amen? You're going to have to press or give up. Remember those four old lepers that sit outside the camp? <clears throat> What'd they say? One of them looked at the other and said, Why sit we here till we die? Mm -hmm. You can sit down today, yeah, but you're going to die right where you're at. Mm -hmm. Come on. You're going to wither up right where you're at. Right. Listen, consider this. If you're out there listening today and you're thinking about giving up, whether you're watching this video or you're listening over the radio, however you're getting it, True. this is God's warning to you. If you sit down, you die. True. If you give up, you die. Right. If you sit down, you wither up and die. Amen. These four old lepers couldn't hardly put one foot in front of the other. I can see them in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Why sit we here till we die? Right. We might as well get up and press on. True. Mm -hmm. We might as well get up and finish this thing. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> we might as well get up and press on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that may be how you feel today. Yeah. You may feel like you're sitting there and sickness is eating you alive. You can't put one foot in front of the other. Let me encourage you today to do like those four old lepers and get up. Even if you got to drag one foot behind you. Amen. 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 It reminds me some of this old, the pictures you see of some of the old war, the, uh, most of the Civil War, where they'd be coming home. Uniform, shot full of holes. Amen. Some of them dragging a leg behind them, but they made it through the battle. Amen. Some of us are going to go over into heaven like that. Amen. That's the way we would look if our bodies wasn't changed. We'd be dragging ourselves right. Well, oh, man, I just made it, didn't I? Hallelujah. I made it over the finish like dragging a leg behind me, dragging a foot behind me. I'm missing a limb or two. Hallelujah. But I made it. I crawled across the finish line one way or the other. I'm going to finish my course because the joy is worth the journey today. The joy is worth the journey. 
Amen. Glory to God. Don't sit there and die. Get up and press on. Get up and press on. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My, my, my. The joy Praise is God. worth the journey. It's going to be worth every trial. Amen. Every heartache and every mile. Right. It's going to be worth it all. Someone else this morning have something before we go. Hallelujah.